So we're waiting on the time for God to answer. Right. And sometimes we don't we don't think God hears. We think, oh, we all been through that. We all know. Especially as mothers, we've been in that, and dad's been in the waiting room while mom's getting ready. So you know when a person is, sorry, young people, when mom's going to have a child, you know, you got the stirring up and the anticipation of the baby coming. At first, you got the start of the baby working. The inside, the baby you're waiting. Well, you can't wait till the fourth month because you know <laughs> that's the fluttering time. That's where you start doing the movement. With all the process, you're having to wait for the fluttering right, time. Right, right, right. The fluttering. That God does. In Isaiah, I looked up the word waiting. Let me go back. A place to linger, to abide, to delay. Stay in one place for a definite purpose. That is for something is expected. Right. Mm -hmm. The action of staying. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Where one is delaying the action until a particular time or until something else happens. Mm -hmm. It means, means to hope, mm -hmm. anticipate, and to trust. Mm -hmm. Humility, meekness, long suffering, keeping the commandments. It's all these little things and enduring to the end. Mm -hmm. All these are little nuggets <coughs> that God is trying to teach in us. Mm -hmm. To wait upon the Lord means planting the seed of faith. That's right. Now, my little plants, by the way. Mm -hmm. And they are growing. Yes, Precious time to get in the truth is what he's going to do what's inside of us mm -hmm. and what our heart and soul is needing because we bet we don't wait in Isaiah 40 28 through 31 has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not he didn't ever stop neither is he weary there is is no searching of his understanding. He didn't wait. He didn't faint. He didn't give up on us. He continued to believe in us. And he continued to believe that what he is going to do in us. And that's the sad part. We don't wait on the Lord. We give up on him. Because he doesn't hear our prayers. We give up on him. And if I cry because I feel God's heart in this. Because it bothers him so much. And it hurts me so much. To see that people don't want to wait on God in His timing and His things that He want to do. They give up on Him. But He doesn't give up on you. He says, I faint not. He, he continues. He increases our strength. He doesn't give us, He continues to give us strength daily. Mm -hmm. But He doesn't faint. He doesn't give up. And they give up. He pray, He. You ask God to do things. You repent. You do the you do the things that you need to do to get right. And then when the battle starts, oh, those trials and all those things of prayers, and you thank God wants to. And He does hear. Yes, he, does. he does hear. It's just we don't want to wait and wait and wait. And what Pastor's mentioned was I waited two years for a long time. And it's, and it's very difficult to wait. That's me. I mean, I used to used to do a lot of things, and then all of a sudden, it's back a little bit. Take a lot of steps back, which it took me a lot of uh, praying and a lot of the uh, Lord. I don't understand. I don't understand this waiting because I feel like Ugh! I know what God wants me to do, but it's like Ugh! I got this. And he says, "Wait, and wait." And I cry because Lord, I hate the waiting. We all hate to the waiting. But we, I'm waiting. And I'm still waiting on God. Still waiting to see what He has more for me to do. That's right. And I know that I know that I know that I know. I just have to still be waiting. Sometimes the waiting room is to cause us to notice things. Do we notice things in the waiting room? In the waiting room, our 
Well, everybody knows I'm working. I don't feel like a lot of the stuff, so that's why I relate to a lot in my mind. Uh, there's all time of waiting. The father's probably out there waiting. Or surgeries. Any type of, you know, everybody, brother, well, you knows about the surgeries. Yeah. Waiting is so much stress because you don't know. You don't have control of that situation. You're trusting in the hands of okay. that surgeon. You're hand, trusting in the hands of, okay, well, this baby's going to be delivered sometime, but in the meantime, I can't control what happens in there. Even giving birth is a dangerous time. Even then, if anything can happen before surgery, before the baby's right. born, before anything can happen, there's always certain things come around and this and that, and I, I can picture a lot of things in my mind because I've been there, seen it, and done it. So there's a lot of danger even for a baby being born. Baby can die at eight months old, that close to death. That's a critical time a mother yes. has had time of giving birth. But even during birth time, it's deadly. That little cord wrapped around that neck, before during crying, you, that baby can die. If that no cord's too short, you can't finish the delivery, it rips. And that baby can die. Mm -hmm. It's a life, that baby's life. And so, that waiting, or maybe emergency surgery, have to take that baby back, have that surgery for that baby to be born. And mm -hmm. make time. You never know. So during the evening when sister with hearts, I've seen many times and waiting because you can't control the surgeon's hands. No. You can't control, you can't be in there because that's a sterile procedures. There's sterile things, infections can happen and all this kind of you can't have me. And that's what happens if you play with it. But Brother Dave was saying, playing with the world and playing with this, you're allowing yourself to get start getting contaminated. Germs. That only takes a little germ to spread in your body that can kill you within seconds. That's right. It goes. It can go from infection. It goes. It can go into the blood, which we call sepsis. Goes into the bloodstream. And then it goes to the bloodstream. That's where it's deadly. That where it can kill you. It goes to the brain. Because your blood flows where it's life. Okay. So. It is very dangerous to play in that field. Brother David could preach this a little bit. I mean, he was on it. Uh, so, it's just like when God led the children of Israel. They had to wait. Moses had to wait. He had 40 years before he became a man, before he killed somebody. And then he had to leave to do some training. Uh -huh. And that training is just like a baby being born. The waiting, the waiting, the surgeries, and waiting. He was in the training. And in that training, we forget those little things that God wants to teach us. Those little things that God wants us to learn from. And the Israelites didn't want to learn those little nuggets that God was trying to do and try to teach in us. And, try to build us and it is for our good it's for our need it's a necessity for us to grow if we don't grow we die mm -hmm. right. those plants those right. seeds and that doesn't grow it will die yes. Yes. and God wants us to grow be strong yes. and rooted yes. and grounded yes. Yes. and when you're not rooted and grounded you fade away with these little trials and little ones that leave and those ones and babies in the Lord and they don't and they give up on God they give up because they don't want to wait. They don't want to, the growing process. Right. And those growing processes are not easy. No, it isn't. So when the Israel was going, and I was thinking about that, and in the desert, I up I got through the sheet of this, because I'm not going in order or how it goes. The desert has 130 degrees very hot. Hot. Very hot. How would you like to stand in the sun for 130 degrees? Nighttime, it is 25 degrees at night. So when God gave them a cloud during the day, is to keep them cool. A nugget for the Israelites to realize. He said, I will help you through the fire. 
through the storm. And he started with them just going through the desert. He's walked with them in the desert. He's got those little nuggets. And by fire, he kept them warm. Comfort. He said, I'll comfort you and strengthen you. Did he not? Yes. He ended up doing what he says he'd do. He walks and he walked and he walked. He even preserved their shoes. Oh, yes, he did. He preserved their clothes. I mean, come on now. How many say can our clothes last forever? <laughs> Four years, right? <laughs> and eight, eight, mm. Moses was 80 years old when he started to technically walk with the Lord. So you're never too old. It says you're never too young to walk with the Lord. Right. To do with the will of the Lord. He had to wait mm -hmm. and he had to learn. He had to learn what the desert was like. Oh, yes. Because Moses didn't know what the desert would like when he go to the promised land ahead of time. So, what do you have to do? So, God sends him in the desert. Say, God already had a plan. He already figured it out. He know what he had to do. We just don't trust the Lord enough to say, I'm going to let you go through that desert. Let you go through this deal. He had to tend to He had to live with his father in law. He had to tend his flock. How to learn how to lead people. Right. There's many things. Those are little nuggets that Moses had to leave. I don't want to keep remembering for right, I guess. I don't know why. But anyway, <clears throat> Moses, he had to do to lead his people off. Those are little trials, and sometimes we have to wait and wait. And we don't want to wait to God. Sometimes we want instant, because our society is so much like instant. So much movement. Media, so much right instant foods, yeah. frozen food, stick it in the microwave. It's more like that's instant. Instant this. It's so but sometimes we miss those blessings of waiting. Mm -hmm. We miss the what God is trying to tell us. We rush into God, telling God, you know. I want it now, Lord. Who has, and who doesn't say that? Who has not I'm guilty. Okay, Lord, I'm guilty. I'll, be, I'll blame on myself. You know, I tell myself. God knows I do. But, you know, and we beg God and we beg God. And I was like, Lord, are we not trusting you? Are we not really trusting you when we have to beg? That's not. I don't feel we should have to beg. We don't. God said He don't ask us to beg for bread. We shouldn't have to beg. He don't want us to beg. He expects us to say, "Okay, I'm pray. You pray about it. I got it. Leave it. Let me take care of it." But we miss the opportunity to grow closer to God. Our time to grow, to time to to let us shape us and mold us and guide us and. Grow. I wrote this one word, so it's yeah. And God wants to shape us. And I'm not going to shape this, by the way. I'm just playing with it. But see, we've got to be flexible. Mm -hmm. yes. Very flexible. we got to be pliable. Pliable. Where pliable. God can shape us. That's right. Pliable. If He can't shape us, mm -hmm. and then we're good, are we? He'll throw it away and try again. Mm He'll -hmm. try again because He do not want to give up on you. That's right. But we. Give up on him. That's our problem. We give up on him more so than we do anybody else. We we give each other we give each other encouragement. We give each other hope. But and we talk to each other. But when it comes right down to it with God and our relationship to Him, we quit. We give up. I see a lot of patients as it is, especially the ones that comes in all the time, repeatedly. They give up. They have a high hopes yep. when they come in, or and after they're coming down. Mm -hmm. They have high hopes. They want to go. Oh, I want to go rehab. I want yeah. this, and I want to get this. I want to get a job. And those are good intentions. They have great intentions at the moment. They really do. And then, like Brother Dave was saying, they go back out. What they do? They go back to the same people, yeah. the same crowd, mm -hmm. the same thing, 
and maybe we might get lucky with them. They may have stay a few years, but most likely we get them within a two or three days, maybe a week back. And it's just very discouraging. And I'm like, how do you imagine God will feel? I would be very discouraged when it comes to that because we try so hard, and God tries so hard yes. to reach his children and say, wait, 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 and wait, and wait, and wait, and what do we do? We quit. We give up. He didn't answer our prayer. He ain't real. He ain't got a way. We don't believe in him. We lose that faith and confidence in him that he heard our prayer. And they walk out the door. Did they not believe? Where is my unbelief? I rather pray, where's my unbelief, Lord? I want to be right. I want to stay right. I want it. Lord, I, I, give me at the altar. Keep me there if I have to stay there and crawl there or whatever. I want to stay where I need to be with the Lord. Yes. Don't get up. That's what he's trying to say. If you have to wait, then wait. If you have a calling, then wait on that calling. Because he's got it for you. He's got great potentials for you. He's got hopes for you. My, one of my favorite scriptures, if you go to 29, Jeremiah 29, 11, 13, that is one of my favorite scriptures. One of my favorites. One of my favorites. I've got several favorites, but you know, that's one of them. For I know, see, he already knows the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace. See, you know when all this trauma with us, all the drama we add to ourselves, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. He has hope for us, He has a tremendous hope for us. Then shall He call upon me. Then He trusts us to do what He wants us to do when we obey. Then you shall call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken, then I will hear, and ye shall seek me and find me, and ye shall search me with all your heart. Yes. We have to search our heart to, to know, to know, is it Lord, is there something I'm not waiting on? Is there not something I'm not holding back? Where am I not trusting you at? Where is it? Where is it, Lord? Get that flashlight on your heart, the light of the Holy Ghost. To search your heart and say, shine on the Lord, show me, show me, show me, show me, show me. Where we're not waiting. Where we're not saying, okay, God, I'm waiting on you. I know you didn't answer, but I know you heard my prayer. we got to praise him through the storm, so we're not saying that. Everything we had today related to what this is right now. Praising through his time of struggle. Praising through the time where you're going through this trial, through the fire, through the storm that you're going through. Through that desert, and deserts, they're dry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ain't no water. Very little if you get cactus now, I'm telling you. Very little. And then, if you get lucky, or blessed, mm -hmm. let me rephrase that word, sorry, Lord. You get blessed, you can speak to the, and have water. Did they not ask for water? Did not God provide? No. He's tired of food in the They were hungry. They ain't no food in the desert. And she looks. I know you that. But he was safe. He provided. He provided food. He provided men. But what did Israel want to do? They wanted to go back to Egypt. They wanted to go back to Egypt. And God wanted them. To see, I provided cloud, I provided fire, I provided food, I provided water, I provided you the word, I provided you encouragement, I gave you strength, I gave you whatever you need, but yet you still want to go back. Because they didn't want to wait. So God took them a three day journey to 40 years. In that 40 years, God was trying to teach them. Trust me. Have faith in me. Walk with me. Turn from the evil ways that God that you don't want to come to those idols. Things that don't do you no good that just sit there and sit there and sit there and do nothing for you. Spiritually or even naturally. No, they don't do anything. They just sit there. And then you have where in John 
five, 14, seven. Yeah, thank you. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us, and he will know that he hears us. Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire in him. He has the desire. We make our request known to him. Hey, I heard you. And we know that he heard us. But where are we to go from there? Our problem is not waiting. Our problem. We have a few that came to in here and they left. It grieves my heart. It really does. Because they didn't wait. They wanted to rush. They wanted to say, God, I want this now. I want this. And God provided for them. Yeah. God provided with holes and cars and blessing after blessing. He even gave them a child. I love you guys. Yeah. He even gave them a child that he asked for. But where are they at now? They didn't wait because they had a calling. But you have to grow in that calling. You have to grow in God to know where He wants you to be. He wants you to be that little seed and build your faith in Him. Thank you, Jesus. The right room is the most powerful. It is the most powerful. <clears throat> sorry, guys. For our prayers to be answered. Uh -huh. So the best time is wait, because that's where our miracles begin. That's where we. <clears throat> sorry. Yeah. Where God does our training. Where God does. Well, we wait. <laughs> Sorry. He does our interventions. He does things that He needs to do. I give you one a little, little story. Little sort of, this is a true story. Me and my husband was looking for a house. And we went through this real estate company, and we put our bid in the one we seen. We told them, "Is there anybody else bid? Let us know." So we did, and we liked the house. We went and seen it. Put it up, put our bid. But then it, <laughs> the person outbid us, and they never called us, <laughs> so we didn't get the house. It's like, oh, okay. Well then. We, I went, okay, I'll try something. Kept looking, found this other house, and I loved it. Got a couple, had it, took good care of it. I even had the church pray over it. We went out and prayed over the house, walked it, walked the grounds, okay, Lord. Went along, it's like the thing caught on fire. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, it wasn't that. <laughs> Those were in the houses that what Lord would. Well what and it didn't dawn on me. He said, Remember your prayer. He said, I want you to be specific in your prayer. And I, I prayed and I forgot what I prayed about, mm -hmm. technically. So I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I told him, I said, Lord, I want a brick house. That's what I said. I said, Lord, I want a brick house, a fireplace, mm -hmm. a dishwasher, because I had kids and had too many stuff to do and working. I didn't want to have to do dishes. Mm -hmm. I don't mind them now, but then I did. I said dishwasher. I was very specific for a three four bedroom. And I waited. Still waiting, waiting, waiting. Yeah. It's like a little discouraged, but I was waiting. Mm -hmm. And one day there was an ad in the paper. Mm -hmm. And me and my husband went to go look at it. Nice couple. Mm -hmm. uh, had it. No, I, and her, well, actually, the mm -hmm. older couple had it. Her husband died, and she ends up with cancer. Oh, no. So they had to sell the house so she could move in with her daughter. Mm -hmm. And when I went out there, we talked, they had a wonderful deal, and they had somebody else interested in the house. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> I said, this is yours. But they loved us so much, they, did, they waited. <laughs> they waited for us to get the house and the money that I had. 
expected to come in and different things, but they waited and say, no, we want you. And believe it or not, exactly what I asked for, I asked them, as a brick house, it had a fireplace, it had a dishwasher, it had three, four bedrooms. <laughs> so everything I asked for, I got received. So see, sometimes you've got to wait for God to work out these little details. You know, you have to wait to get this house that I asked the Lord for because sad that her husband had to die and I'm sad she had cancer. We became really good friends. We actually became neighbors. But and we still have good friendship to this day. Mm -hmm. But God knew exactly where I needed to be. He did I didn't want my kids in town. Different things like this. I just kinda you know, I had to sit things that I wanted mm -hmm. for my child children. So but I waited. I had to wait. God has to work out these little details yeah. here and there yeah. and everywhere and this and that. Yeah. If we just wait mm -hmm. and wait and see what God has to do, it will come on His time. It says that He has a time and a season for things. Yeah. Well, if it's a time and a season, why are we not waiting? We have to wait for the growth. We have to wait to the process that God has there. It's like being pregnant and being expecting a child. You know that baby's going to come. It's after the, after the kick and after the growth and after the, oh, ouchies, oz and not, lock and sleep and hurt and pain and kick and oh, my Lord, have mercy. Then, you know, eventually, the water. <laughs> you know, here's your sign. Yeah. Well, God gives you your sign. Hey, the answer's on the way. The baby's coming. You're gonna. It's time for delivery. There's going to be a time for delivery for your calling, your gifts, or whatever God has put on you to do. Your, if you're saying you want to sing, if you want to do whatever for the ministry of the Lord, He's going to have a time where you will have birth to this gift, this calling. And then, of course, the waiting room again. You got to wait, for parents, for this child, and then the delivery. Sometimes those deliveries, oh Lord. Sometimes it's 23 hours or three or four a week of labor. <laughs> Just imagine us laboring for weeks. Oh, trust me. Those are very painful. But in the time of delivery, it has to be the right time. People rush into having and having children. I won't wait this long. I'm going to have. No, God still wants you to have time with that child. Right time. You have it too soon, like I had my son, but don't have my fault. I had him two months early. He ended up pneumonia, sick, hospital, you know. Two months early. A lot of things and complications have happened too soon. You do too soon for the go to head of God, what happens? You end up having, you end up going backwards, or you run away. You think, oh, God tells me that I can do this, I can do that. I do this. God told me I can do that. I've run into people. Been ones. God said I called them to preach, and they want a pastor. I mean, to say they went back on God. They went out drinking, went out to bars because they didn't wait. And now they got killed, and now they're not right with the Lord. I mean, because they didn't want to wait. You don't want to wait and do the right timing. You're back. You end up backing up. You don't want to say, "We saying, well, I don't want to turn around. I don't want to turn around. I don't. Want, I want to go back. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back." So let us learn to wait. He said, "I want you to soar like the eagle. We can't soar like the eagles if we keep fainting. If we walk away, He wants us to soar. He wants to soar. I sure do. He wants to soar. I want to soar. I want to fly like those eagles. Let's get away up there. And I, and I ain't afraid of heights, people. So I, I'm good there." <laughs> so, if we want to soar, we want to fly. We want to do. Then we got to soar like the eagles. Got. Then we need to wait. Let's soar. Let us all want to soar for the Lord, because that's what He wants. He hasn't expected in. He wants us to do powerful, great things. He has things calling for our churches. We've been having. Believe us, we've been waiting for years, and I've been here since 1985. That's a long time in the church. And waiting for the gifts and the callings that the people that God has put on this church. Lord, have mercy. But we've been waiting. Don't give up. 
let us soar. Let us fly. Because he wants us to fly. Can you imagine mm -hmm. flying? I know we're going to go to rapture. That ain't not going to fly. He wants us to fly here on earth. Yes. He wants us to do and be do what he has called us. He wants us to do the things and the yes. miracles and callings and gifts yes. that he has set for us to do. Yes. Not just set and mumble and jumble and, that and give up on God because he didn't answer our prayer. Yeah. 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 Just whatever. Have y'all been there? We all been there. We all been there. So yeah, God, I don't hear you. Yeah, you don't hear me. What's wrong with you? We yell a little louder. Lord, help me. Then we get louder. You know me. I'm like, you know me. I'm, I'm there a little But I'm sorry. But then we get, and then we yell harder and louder. And I won't do that for y'all. But because we don't get it, wait. We wait and we wait. Please, God wants us to do marvelous, great things in this work for Him. God is up. You can see Brother David and Sister Lisa are great examples. God put them in there. God is doing wonderful things. And He's got wonderful things for each one of us. Oh, yes, we all right. have a purpose. We all have a plan. God has a plan for each one of us. I don't care how old Moses was, like I said, 80. And because you're 80 years old, do you think God can't use you? What's wrong with y'all? Get real. God is real. Get real. He wants you to soar. You can do things that above and above and expediently what everything He asked and called you to do. But why not wait? Grow. Search your heart. See if there's anything that causes or unbelief or is there doubts or there's what, what, what. What is it, Lord? I search my heart every day. I say, Lord. Yeah, you get anything out of putting on me? Because I don't want it. Because I want to grow. I want to grow deeper yeah. and walk in the, like the tree. Amen. And like the eagles. I soar like the eagles. I want to soar like the eagles. Mm -hmm. I want to do the will, mainly His will. Not my will. Yes. What do you mean? This is so nerve wracking. I'm up here. But I, if God wants me to do it, I will be obedient. Okay. I will do what He wants me to do. And I may be going crazy. That's all right, because I go crazy at work, so I, I get right in. So, you do what the will of the Lord is. And wait, if you guys has called you to do something, please wait right on until now. The pastor will know. He will know. He will know when it's time to, okay, now it's time to fly your wings. It's like a mom or bird. Okay, time to get out of your nest. I'm to Get out. Because then if he wants that bird, mama bird wants that bird to fly. You got to get out of that nest sometime. You can't stay in your comfort zone. You got to get out of the nest. That's right. When it's God's timing. Yeah. It's His season, His timing. Not our timing. And that's where we get out of the will of the Lord. It's because we want it our way and not God's way. And His ways and our thoughts is not His thoughts. We've got to stay founded and grounded in Him. Because if we don't, we're going to mess up. We're going to go. We're going to... And I I certainly don't want to go backwards. I want us to soar. And I want us as a body to soar. Be one mind, one and four. Because if we're not, then we're going to be just like falling away. Part of us will be, part of us won't be. We have to be one mind, one core. And there's young people, same difference. You gotta have that desire too. You gotta give some calling. You got a purpose. You do. You have a purpose. Every one of you has a purpose. You guys got beautiful voices. Start using them. Let God grow in it. Let don't let it die. Don't let it die. Let it grow. That's right. You guys and deep on your preacher. Learn to grow in God. Right. Learn to grow. Say, okay, God, feed me, feed me. Be that sponge. Soak it in. Soak it in. When you read, read it. Okay, Lord, ow, give it to me. Give it to me, Lord. Say it to me. I do. Anyway, I'm just me. But uh, one God can mold you. Shake him. I want God you to soar like an eagle. Those that wait upon the Lord 
shall renew their strength, right? He wants us to mount up with wings and like an eagle. Hallelujah. Let us soar. Amen. Soar like the birds, but higher. Higher than birds. That was a, at least a thousand feet in the sky diving. So that was that wants us go further than that. So I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm at least that close to you. You can take me to choose, but you know, it wasn't a so I guess I'm here. <laughs> but anyway, I love the Lord. But I love I too. the things of God. Please. But I love you all more. Please wait. Please do what God wants you to do, but wait if it's not time. Let him do it in his season. Time, let him grow, let him do the purpose that he has for you, the plans that he has for you, the peace that he wants to give to you, even though you're going through trials, during those trials, through the desert, through the storms, trust him and that he's going to see you through. He didn't faint for you, but when he died on the cross, he kept going, he kept on with his walk he to do what he finished it. As he pastor said, it is finished. He finished his course. Finish your course. Finish your race. Finish what God has planned for you. He has called you out for a purpose. He has called you out for a plan. Let him finish the race. Don't faint. Don't faint. If you feel like you're going to faint, then ask God to renew your strength. If you're going to feel like you're going to fall, come and let him renew your strength in you. Get that strength back in you. Get that hope in you. Give him that word of you. Get it in you. Please. God is asking you if there's anything in there that you need to be stronger in. Build it up. Let him do what he needs to do.